WTRnetwork.net. Greg Banks Show, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Welcome to a Wednesday. It is the uh, fifth day of April, 2017. News out of Johnstown. They have found the uh, people involved in the shooting on Monday night. We're trying to reach Greg Jones, who, by the way, lost a son through a, uh, of course, senseless shooting earlier this year. And let's see if we can't raise Greg now. I think we have the right phone number here. Let's see what happens uh, on the Greg Banks Show. Hello? Good morning, good morning. Greg Banks on the line with Greg Jones. Mr. Jones, how are you, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good, holding up in spite of everything that's going on. I am glad to hear that. You know, we've been trying to get you just on the air to, uh, of course, send you our thoughts and our prayers on the Greg Banks Show. And you and I have known each other for many years, and I'm not going to dwell on it. But, hey, you got to be feeling, I, I hope, a little bit better today uh, in, light, in light of the news that we just got um, recently about the uh, shootings in Johnstown and the fact that they might have found somebody involved in that shooting. Well, you know, I, I want to say, I, I first want to give my condolences to this latest young man, mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Kevin Sitton. I want to give my condolences to his family because no one has the right to kill you. Right, right. And in spite of what they found or how he's portrayed, nobody had that right. That's yeah. why we have a judicial system. Yes, sir. And, you know, and I know what was being said out there in the streets and how he might have been responsible for, you know, my son's death. Mm -hmm. However, he's still someone's child. He's still someone's grandchild. He's still someone's father. Right. And we just don't have a right to play vigilante. And when it's just as simple, or I don't know how simple it is because they talk about these street codes and, yeah. not being snitches and stuff. And I've never been, I, I, I didn't grow up that way, so I don't know their feeling. Yeah. But, you know, as far as me, the way I would handle things is, you know, I probably would go to the law, you know, and let them handle it right. and uh, things like that. Yeah, and that's really what I wanted to call you about this morning, <clears throat> Greg, because, you know, you have been in my thoughts and my prayers, and I, I know that you're really connected to the community there. First of all, you've been very active for many years, you're a military man who has decided to come back home from time to time, raise your children. Unfortunately, you lost a child through the senseless gunfights that have occurred there in Johnstown. And I, I really, you know, here again, I got to think about the family uh, of Tevin Sitton this morning. He's just another number, but he's a number with a name. He's somebody's child, grandchild, and you're connected to the community. You know a lot of these people. That's got to be difficult. Uh- it, it, you know, in a community like Johnstown, uh, someone said it right. They said, we might not all have the same blood running through our veins, but we are all family. Yes. Because that is that is how we were raised up in Johnstown. And I know a lot of the sitting family, uh, yeah. and I really know the uh, the patriarch of the family, right. Mr. Herb Sitton Sr. From down I know the, him. Yeah. And, and yeah. uh, you know, and I, I just feel... For everybody, there there's no winners here in this situation. None, right? You know, my my family is grieving. The other families who have lost, uh, uh, the Jones family, the Brandon family, the Andrews family. Yeah, you know, everybody is grieving, and we have these unsolved murders in our city, and we just want, you know, things to pan out the right way. If yeah. you know something, say something to the police. But once again, you know, I don't know, uh, I don't know the street life of these children and and what they're going through. But I do realize that we as adults and we as parents of these children, we have to be more engaged with them, and we have to talk more with them, and we have to, you know, really ask how they feel. We just can't say, well, right. they're grown; they make their decisions. Yeah. Well, some of their decisions uh, impact how we have to further live our life. And, you know, and then you have all these children now Mm -hmm. of these young men, all of them, even the one that just got killed, you know, they have to grow up without their father, you know, and it breaks my heart, you know, to see my granddaughter, uh, my son's daughter. And, you know, she comes to my house or goes to her 
to her grandma's house and she actually has a conversation with the picture oh. that's sitting on the on the table because she misses her daddy. And yeah. those things are heartbreaking and I'm sure these things happen with the children of the other victims. Yeah. yeah. And it, it just to me it, it makes no sense and I, I want peace. You know, and I, I just want, you know, us to stand and take action in a positive way so that Johnstown can get turned back around. How do we reach these young men? I know you've been reaching out, trying to get them maybe to come and uh, talk a little bit about maybe, well, you know, matter of, matter of fact, maybe their feelings or maybe to share some of the problems here. But they're not forthcoming. And a lot of people don't go to the police department. Uh, maybe they don't trust them, Greg. Could that be one of the biggest well, problems? Well, I have talking to the police chief, and I have written different uh, statements and my feelings on uh, on Facebook. But Johnstown does have a police force that its makeup does not represent all that she serves. I understand. So w- when when you see all these atrocities going across America and how young black men are being killed um, by the police, there is a distrust, yeah. you know, people can say what they want to say, you know, black and white children are actually raised differently. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we, from day one, we, we teach our children that when you get stopped, you know, keep your hands on the yeah. wheel or, uh, you know, don't, don't be disruptive, follow the orders of the police. And it just seems like white children, they don't have that you know, worry when they go out the door. Well, their parents... You know, every time our children go out the door, we have a big worry that they're not going to come back either by our own folks right. or by the police. And that is a culture that many of us have been raised uh, with. Now, I came from Huntington County, where I am now. We never had that problem necessarily, but I lived there in Johnstown for 30 years, and I saw it happen. And, you know, it's just as, well, here again, I can make a very good case of we had a black uh, person on the police a force there for many years, Mr. Jeffers. And, you know, he could go and he could talk to a lot of these kids. And that's not very easy for them to go and talk to the other cops who might be, let's say, in the projects there. Um, So I don't know, it's a whole re-education there. And like you said, we worry about it as uh, black parents. But let me ask you this. Tell us a little bit, because there was a real connection here. The, The money team, you know, the rap group that your son was in, Zach Andrews, I watched his his videos, and I saw some of the positive thing these kids did with their music and trying, I guess, to reach the other kids at one given time. There's a real connection here. You basically were connected to all these children in one way or another. Tell us, first of all, this, the name of your son, and tell us a little bit about him, because, you know, we're always getting the negative things. We're not getting the positive things, and this is a young man who had a lot to look forward to in the future. Well, my son's name was Kevin Jones, and, uh, you know, the Kevin that I knew, the Kevin that his mother and I raised and that the family was around, he was a real laid-back type of guy. Mm-hmm. And he he never really, he never, I never really seen Kevin upset about anything. This was the type of kid who never disrespected me, yeah. as far as I knew, never disrespected his mother. There has not been one adult that I have encountered that I've known for years and years who has said my son has disrespected them in any way. Um, Kevin was the type that even though he didn't have a lot, he would still give to other people. You know, there was times where he would give his clothes and his shoes away to the younger children. I had a a young lady uh, who lives not too far from me. You know, she, when she saw his face on the news, mm. you know, she, uh, or heard about him being killed, you know, she reached out to me and said, you know, your son was behind my son in the line. And when my credit card declined and he couldn't get the stuff he needed, your son said, everybody needs help sometime. Yeah. And he bought that stuff. You know, that was the type of person Kevin was. And, like, I know the other children. I, you know, I know their parents. I grew up with them. And, you know, I knew Zach since he was a baby. I knew Jalen since he was a baby. And, you know, I didn't really know uh, Jordan Rose, and I didn't know the uh, other members. But 
you know, they were trying to do some positive things, but as you know, rap always gets a bad stigma. Right. And then right. things things start to go wrong. But I'll have to be honest with you. I don't know what went wrong and why this, you know, beef with these kids have gotten out of control to where they think that killing someone mm -hmm. is the way to go. I, I don't know what went wrong. I, I just know that I have a, a heartache that will never mend because he was my oldest son, mm -hmm. and I loved him tremendously. His mother loved him tremendously, and the family, we all loved him. But at the same time, I, I, I feel for the people who, who have done this. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I did when uh, both of my sons were killed last year, you know, I had one killed in January of last year down in North Carolina, yeah, and yeah. then I had uh, my son in Pennsylvania killed. One of the first things I did was pray for those who did it. Yeah. I asked God to, you know, forgive them, you know, and, and I looked at it, you know, God came over me and he pointed to the fact that, you know, when his son went on the cross, yeah. you know, he said to his father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yes, sir. So if God... So if God could forgive those who killed his son, who am I not to forgive those who killed mine? It doesn't take the heart away, the heartache away. Right. But all this going back and forth and retaliation, it yeah. is troubling. You yes, know, sir. it is really troubling. And my heart is so filled with pain, you yeah. know. And people tell me all the time, well, how, how can you, you know, pray for that family, you yeah. know, of this young man who just died. Or how can you do that? Because he's a human being. Mm -hmm. Let's just start there. He's human. Right. And we don't have a right to play God. You know, yeah. I may not have liked a lot of the things which I was hearing, you know, yeah. but we don't have a right to take his life. And now, like once again, his children are without a father. Right. His wife is without a husband, his mother is without a son, and on and on. Man. We just, we have to think. Yeah. Well, it certainly sounds like, you know, and they did make an impact in the short lives that they had, but the reality is now, I mean, their children will feel the impact the rest of their lives without their fathers, in this case. You lost two sons. I got to under, well, he, maybe you can tell our audience, how do you make it through every day, Greg? Because you are such a positive person. You're encouraging people. I see you on Facebook all the time. It, it can be easy. And are you feeling a little maybe uh, peaceful now? I mean, I know you're connected to God and you have strong faith. What gets you through the day, man? It, it is my faith that gets me through the day. I, um, I was raised in the church. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my father was a pastor. And, you know, my grandfathers were deacons in the church. Yeah. And that was our life. But right. see, it comes a point, you know, when you're a teenager, you want to be a little rebel, and you kind of veer away. But the Word says, you know, you raise a child up in the way he should go, so when he's old, he won't depart from it. Amen. Well, now I consider myself older, <laughs> mm. and I know that there's nothing too hard for God. And I know that, you know, we, we must trust Him, and we have to lean on Him. Mm -hmm. And when these things happen, the mm. first thing I say, God, if you just give me one day of strength, yeah, I promise I'll lean on you and I'll make it the rest of the way. It is hard. You yeah. know, I have my days where I do cry a lot. I have my days where I, I really miss my son. And when the phone rings, you know, hoping it's him yeah. asking me, you know, what you doing? Right. Followed by, can you give me a ride somewhere? He would do that crazy stuff and it would drive me nuts, <laughs> you know, because he called me around the clock and just do different things and knock at the door at all times of the night. Yeah. But, you know, he was my son, and yeah. I would have done anything to keep him safe. Yeah. And, you know, and the other kids who, who, who were taken away and different things like that. You know, it is sad because, like I said, I know their parents. I grew up with their parents. Right. And we may not share the same blood, all of us, but we are family. Johnstown yeah. was that unique community yes sir mm -hmm. um that was like that now i'm not going to sit here and, and blame these crises of of people out of town because 
there are a lot of good people who came from out of town. And Johnstown really is no different than any other city. Yeah. We're just smaller, and we happen to know of everybody. Everybody. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, and, oh, my goodness. It just, you know, if you don't have God, and this is just my opinion, because people may not believe in God the way I do. Yes, sir. But if, if you don't have God, you know, this these these things are just going to continue to happen. Yeah. You know, but we, we got to pray about it. We got to not just pray, but we have to be active with our young men. If you know they got guns and doing different stuff, you know, that next knock at the door could be the corner telling you your son yeah. is, is gone. Right. You know, and no parent should have to bury their child. None. Yeah. No parent should have to bury their child. And, you know, but like I say, I, I have a, a great support system through the church through my family, right. you know, they've been standing, you know, with me and then, you know, the community, you know, and it feels good when people tell me, you know, I'm sorry that you lost your son and he was this and he was that, you know, it feels good to hear that, yeah. you know, and that, and that's what gets me going and my grandkids and, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. And, um, yeah, we just, I, I just pray, you know, I hope, that these young ones wake up and realize that this is not the way. Once you pull that trigger, there's no chamber in that round again back in that gun. It's gone. Yeah. It, it, it's going to do some kind of damage. No way to get it back. You know, let, let me ask so. you this. Someday, I guess we'll all understand better by and by. And rea the reality is we're dealing with what's happening now. And I don't want to look for a blame, but is there any correlation right now between these these gun violence and these fatalities and maybe the drugs? Because I know Channel 6 is doing a um, town hall tonight on TV, and they're trying to come up with a solution, I guess, to the drug problem. Is there, I don't know, what do we do, Greg? What do we do? How do we reach these children who are caught up in the drugs and the gunfire? Well, first of all, we have to report fairly and accurately okay you know they when when they report deaths on white children you know we don't hear about these white children's background yeah but when they report on the black and the brown kids you know then automatically their background comes into play that's right that is not the issue what are we going to do to help these children what are we going to do to stop the violence? Because if we can just start right there, mm -hmm. everybody wants a safe community. Everybody wants uh, good schools and different things for their children to go to. So we should start right there. We all have that common ground. But the news just does not report, you know, fairly. Yeah. They don't. Because, you know, here we are. Zach's been gone. It'll be uh, three years, three I years. think, April 14th. Yes, sir. And yet every time something happens, they want to report on, you know, his background. Yeah. Well, the the honest truth is he was murdered. Yeah. He yeah. was murdered. Let's start there. And let, you know, my son was murdered. Uh, uh, Kareem Brandon was murdered. And, and Micaiah Jones was murdered. Yeah. We don't need to know a background of a person to try to get these things solved or try to put positive solutions to move forward. Yeah. You know, we we never hear about the white children's backgrounds or or what they might have done. Mm -hmm. You know, trust me, <laughs> these yeah. black kids they're getting these drugs from somewhere, and trust me, it ain't us bringing it in. Yeah, I don't know if anybody has planes, <laughs> trains, or automobiles, or even you know. I, I, well, that's another <laughs> subject for another day. Where you know we had uh, some folks distribute um, some heroin and some cocaine at one time. Into the airport, which we don't own planes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And we so, don't, we don't uh, own yeah. those things. Yeah. So it's not us bringing it in, but we're, you know, they get it down to us and we're, right. you know, distributing it. Yeah. You know, and then when we kill ourselves, we are doing nothing but dismantling our own race. Right. You know, right. you know, and I, I say this and I don't want to upset anybody or step on any toes but when it comes to the black community we don't stand up for each other enough right. we don't we don't support each other enough mm -hmm. we are very negative towards one another you know and that that in itself is sad yeah it is, it is often said if you want to hide something from the 
from the black community or from the black race, put it in a book. Put it in a book, because yes. They, they say we don't read enough. Yeah. They say we don't, you know, anything that they want to hide from us or, or get through the system, just put it in a book because yeah. we're not going to read. And we're not going to stand together to change that. We're going to come up with differences. And just like this recent uh, killing here, mm -hmm. it has divided the community, you know. Yeah. And like I said, once again, his background has, has no no reason why somebody should have killed him. Yeah. I, you know, I feel, I, I, I understand what is going on. I do in that manner of why he might have been killed. But nobody had the right to right. take his life. Nobody. Hey, you're one of those. And, um, uh, well, go ahead, Jerry. Go. No, I'm just saying nobody had the right to take his life. And we just, we have to think. We, we just have to think because there's no take twos in life. You know, and as a, a mortuary affairs specialist that I, I did most of my career in the military, and I would see a lot of deaths daily, you know. Yeah. There's no coming back from that. It's it's a done deal. Yeah, you know, we, one and it, done. It, it's over. Yeah, this is no. Uh, this is not practice, ladies and gentlemen, or a rehearsal. This is real life. And you know, I used to tell guys back in uh, Johnstown when we had a video uh, production uh, class there at Keystone Economic Development Corporation with Alan Andrews and I. And you know some of the guys that were in that class, and I could name names. But anyhow, I used to tell them, "Hey, welcome to the real world. This is how it is." You can't get it back. You know, you got to live your life one minute at a time, and it's got to be a quality of life. So, Greg, I just appreciate that you share your story with us today. I don't know how we're going to get through this, you know, without God, of course, but the reality is people have to understand the bullets and the drugs, they don't discriminate. It happens to anybody. It could be your child tomorrow. You know, I think a lot yeah. of people in Johnstown kind of feel like, oh, that's just them. That's not us. Well, you know, you ever, ever notice the drug epidemic that they're having? Oh, it happened in our neighborhoods with crack many years ago, 20, 25 years ago. Now it's coming home to roost, and all of a sudden, people were paying attention. Well, where was the right. attention back then, you know? You know, but everybody is, you know, what you know, a lot of the community is saying, they're quick to solve these drug cases or, yeah. you know, they're quick to, you know, like the young man. There was a, a young uh, white kid that got killed uh, the same day my son got killed. Matter of fact, he, he got killed close to my son's grandmother's house. Okay. And, you know, he his case was solved within 24 to 48 hours. And here we are, three years with Zach, yeah. two years with Makai, and now months with my son, and recently uh, Kareem Brandon. And we're saying that, you know, why aren't these cases being solved? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the reasons they're not being solved, yes, there's not enough cooperation from the community, and I got it. And like I said, I don't know what the feeling is or why they don't want to talk because that wasn't my life. That's not how I was raised. So I don't know. Right. But, you know, I challenged the police department that they have to do old fashioned police work. If no one's talking, yeah. you got all this circumstantial evidence and you have to use it. You have to be tough. And I challenged, uh, the, uh, Kelly Callahan to give the police the resources to do with what they have to do what they have to do. Right. You know, and, you know, it, it'll make it better. But if a community comes together and, and stands together, a lot of these things will be solved. If we say, no, we're not going to take this in our communities anymore, then, you know, a lot of these things will be solved. But I do pray. I, I pray hard for everybody. And that's you know, important. Yes. Everybody. And God doesn't cause the, the, he causes the sun to shine on the good and the bad. So when I pray, I pray for those who are not doing right for those who want to do right and for those who are doing right and need the strength to continue. And that's what I do, you know, on a daily basis. And I just, I just want our communities back. I want Johnstown to be the Johnstown that it was when we were younger, but they need to work harder in the economic, you know, they oh, need yeah. to bring more jobs here right. and to, you know, get more things to do, uh, in the community for these young children to do. And like we said before, it's still a cultural basis. Yeah. They bring concerts here, but 
they're not concerts that <laughs> not maybe that. the black or the brown kids would go to. Exactly. You and know? I, yeah, I used to yeah. say that they would never do that because they didn't want us all in one place at one time. And now I know <laughs> that's not a joke, but here again, we were just joking aside the other day, a bunch of us, and it's like, isn't it interesting how the FBI found Tom Brady's um, jersey real quick, but they can't find these missing kids. <laughs> no, know, so they can't. You so know, or be, well, not that they can't. They don't want to. They don't want to. And that's just that's just my feeling. They yeah. just don't want to. And I don't want to put. I don't want to point the fingers and blame anybody. But again, you know, if you have the resources, let's use them for the betterment of all people. You know, we could give you a litany and a list of names of people. Uh, you know, going back to um, oh. You know, many people, probably in Johnstown over the years, back to, I can cite cases to you, Greg, before you were born that we heard about when I worked at Channel 10. And I can't tell you, even though I lived in Johnstown 30 years, there was always this kind of distrust that was going on in the community as far as uh, the police, because they weren't doing local policing necessarily. You know, the only time they, you'd they, see them hang, they hang out. Yeah, they were just uh, maybe the only time you would see them is when they would come into your neighborhood to rouse some people. You know what I mean? That's not well, cool. Well, we've lived with sort of a uh, tragedy through the police department, you know, all my life now. Right. I had a cousin who, who was killed by the cop before I was born. Was his that Timmy? Was Timothy, his That's name right. was Timothy Perkins. Yeah, yeah. And he, he was killed by uh a cop before I was born in the alley. But, yeah. Downtown. I remember downtown, but you know, I watched my uncle, uh, Lester Perkins senior. I watched him as he got older, you know, he would look at certain people and he, he would always call Timmy's name mm -hmm. that, that just showed he never got over that loss of his son. Right. And it was so heartbreaking, especially when he got older and then the, you know, maybe dementia or a little bit of the Alzheimer's set in, you know, and he would just constantly call my cousin, Michael, mm -hmm. Timmy, yeah. you know, yeah. he never got over that. And it is a loss because that cop got off. Yes, he did. To my understanding, he, he, he killed Timmy, he killed another kid, but the only time they chastised him on the police force, is, we found out, is when he slept with his sister-in-law. Mm, uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what, what value do we have as a black community? But I must say this, you know, black lives do matter, all lives do matter, but black lives will matter to everybody else when it starts, uh, you know, mattering to us. Yeah. If this were young, if this were white kids killing black kids or cops killing these kids, we would be in the streets, you know, marching. marching. But right. because it's black on black crime, we say nothing. Mm. We say nothing. And then it continues. I hope and I pray that, you know, this starts the dialogue, you know, yeah. that fathers you know, of my generation, fathers and mothers, we start talking to our children more to get them out of this life, get them, push them to, to do more positive things. You know, everybody wants that fast money and, you know, they want this, that, and the other, but, you know, that's not the way when I mean, you always have to look over your shoulder and wondering who's coming to get you and all this other stuff. Right. It's just sad. You know, I just want, I just want a peaceful resolution to all this. And, you know, I, I heard, you know, when this young man died, you know, there's going to be retaliation. I hope not. No. I really hope not. I just hope it just ends. Yeah. We have to just let it end, you know. Yeah. Let his family grieve and let them bury him and everything. But I'm still going to pray for them because yeah. I think it's the right thing to do. You know, right. I, I'm going to continue to pray for the other families of the lost. I'm going to continue to pray and lift my family up, you know, but not just for Johnstown community across the United States. This right. Is, this is happening. It's happening too, yeah. all too often. And I, I wanted to just kind of touch on something when you you mentioned, you know, isn't it sad commentary when we have to send our children out and we have to tell them prior to going out there in case you ever get stopped. There's a protocol, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. so that you can save your life. I don't know of mm -hmm. any other culture that has to do that for their children other than we as black men have to tell our children from the beginning, when they're young, mm -hmm. that they have to be yeah, safe it, out here in the streets because, you know, there's just too many ways to die. It, it is very sad, you know, and, 
you know, it, in like, you know, we we work, you know, we right. have jobs and, you know, we, we buy nice cars and different things. And, you know, a lot of times we let our children drive those cars and here they are being stopped. Pulled over. Because yeah. pulled over for nothing. <laughs> and there's, you know, the, the main question when they get pulled over is, yeah. whose car is this? Or how are you driving this car? You know, that yeah. shit. Did I do anything? I only you know, you know, the only reason I'm laughing. I, did, hey, the only reason yeah. I'm laughing is because I don't know if you were in town at the time, but it seemed like damn near every week Jeff Wilson was getting pulled over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> remember, he worked for that car lot or somebody, and he was driving new cars and getting pulled over damn near every day. You know, and that's it, sad. <laughs> it, it is very sad, you know. Oh. And but we do we we have nice cars, we have a nice house, and different things. And our children, you know, they want no more than uh the white kids you know they they want to uh you know just be left alone and to live carefree right you know if they're doing if they're truly doing something you know that's going to be a hazard to the community that's a okay, difference okay let, yeah. let's get them in check but do you have to beat them do yeah. you have to pull your gun on them you know yeah. it, it's just it is so out of control and you know i i like this new police chief i grew up with him uh, I went to school with Jeff Jansinger, and I know his character and I know his heart. Right. So I, I want to give him an opportunity to turn things around. Now, you mentioned Mr. Jeffers earlier. Mr. Yes, sir. Jeffers has always been a figure, a huge figure Charles in the Jeffers. community. Yeah, exactly. And he he does. He still is out there talking to the young ones and, you know, mentoring and doing all that. He's very positive. Yeah, yeah. I do believe if we would have had uh, our first black police chief, yeah. it should have been him. Oh, it no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. You know, No it, doubt. It should have been him. But, you yeah. know, you have the Camry County politics and all this and that. Right. And, you know, they're trying to run him out of there. But he should be able to leave on his own time. He has yeah. served. The community of Johnstown since 1970. Man, he's been there forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to say to Charles when I would see him, dude, are you ever going to retire? And he'd say, for what? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I said, well, Charles, what if, you, what if you have we to... We don't want him to retire. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. Because there again, you know, you know I think they're our... trying to recruit some new... <laughs> I think they're trying to recruit now. Is that true? Yes, the police department, I've talked to the police chief about that, and they would love to have minorities and, and more women on the police force and different things like that. So, you know, I, I talk to Jeff, you know, when he has time and different things like that because, you know, with everything going on, they're pretty busy. But they are yeah. trying to, you know, do the recruiting and, and get folks. But another thing that is not, you know, mandatory for our police and our community anymore mm -hmm. is that they live there. It's not mandatory for the police to live in the communities that they serve. Oh, that's right. So yeah. back in the day, you, you, you had the police, police officers who lived in the communities and it made for a better community. Now these police officers, they work for Johnstown, but they live out on the outskirts of the city of Johnstown or they commute in. You have no connection to this community. You know, so one of the things I would challenge the city council and the city manager is to, um, you know, change that. You yeah. know, let's get it on the ballot to say that the police uh, have to live in their communities if they're going to take a job with our force. And I know another it, thing is, go ahead. They don't. They're not paying the police enough. No, no. they're not paying them enough. You know, they they're really not. But another thing that has been brought up several times. Johnstown's uh, government system, you know, it's run by the city manager. Then why do we have a mayor? You know, that mayor is elected. Yeah. So why does the mayor not have the authority that the city manager does? The city manager is the most powerful person in, in Johnstown. And a lot of times we don't get city managers who are from Johnstown that come in. Right. These things go out on the net that people apply and they come in and they take the job. If you're going to run the city, okay, if you want to be the city manager, yeah, run the other departments. But one of the departments that should be under the control of the mayor is the police, police force. Police department, right. Well, you, is the police department. Yeah, you yeah. almost have to change the form of government. I don't know. I think we did change it whenever you were a youngster in high school. We went from strong mayor to the city manager. 
uh, kind of design. And they would have to kind of put that on the referendum, on the ballot, in order to change the form of government. But I understand where you're coming from. And the thing about the police living in Johnstown, other communities have enticed police to move back to their municipalities by working out a housing thing where they could get housing at low interest or perhaps virtually free as a part of their compensation package. Now, you know yourself, right. Greg, there are a lot of houses there that are abandoned that could actually be fixed up and be nice homes in Johnstown where these people yeah. could live. And, 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 and that is true. You know, there, there are a lot of beautiful homes throughout Hornerstown, oh, Turnville, yeah. and different things. You know, they've just been, you know, they weren't, the TLC is gone because, you know, that older generation is gone and, right. you know, the younger ones have moved out of town. So nobody's giving them those properties love. But, you know, if you do put a compensation package together for a, a cop to move in the community, there are a lot of beautiful houses that that could happen. Oh, and yeah. then you would see a positive change in the community if you had the police uh, living within the community and stuff. So, exactly. you know, like I said, there, you know, uh, we, we just have to, when we know better, we have to do better. And, you know, and that's one of the things that I say. But, you know, one of my slogans that I always use and I believe, my God is good, y'all. Not because I say so, but just because he just is. Just know? because he just so. is. I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, Greg, Greg Jones, thanks for joining me on the Greg Banks Show today, man. It's been a while. You know, when I left Johnstown, I did see you at the gas station one time, and I wanted to lift you up and tell you you're doing a great job because, you know what, you're a positive guy, and in spite of all the things that have happened, I know you're not going to get beat down to the point where you just stop caring. And so I I appreciate your time and effort. We need to talk again further. I just hope everything works out for the best, and I'll keep you in my prayers and my thoughts and, and hope the best for my old hometown of Johnstown. I was there 30 years had to move back to my actual hometown of Huntington, but hey, my heart is still there with you guys in the friendly city because it is the friendly city and always has been. We hope things turn around for you. Yes, thank you for having me on. All right, hey, let me ask you this before I wrap things up. Uh, This conversation today, do you mind if I put a little bit of it uh, on Facebook so the folks, so we can share it with the folks out there? Uh, In addition, I I have no problem with that, and I just hope whatever I say, you know, can help our community and help us go in the right direction. There are a lot of great people who are trying. Miss Debbie Coleman, she's oh, out yeah. there trying. Mr. Ricky Britt, he's going to be running for city, city council. council. Miss Sylvia uh, Carr. King, yeah. um, Pastor Sylvia King, she's going to oh, be yeah. running. Yeah. So we're, we're getting a lot of people now who are starting to stand up and, and help the community, which is great. Yeah. You know, so I, I just keep prayerful and keep working with these folks and everything and things will get turned around. You know, they will. It's just going to take some time. That's all. I know it will. Hey, sorry for your loss again. And by the way, continue to do what it is that you do, Greg, because you do it very good. And I really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you for your time again, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Greg Jones from Johnstown joining us on the Greg Banks Show.